Good morning and welcome to this March 14th, 2021 online Sunday service for First Presbyterian Church in Penetanguishene. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you as you come to join us to worship together in spirit and in truth. And of course, even though we are at home um, or in different places of the, the community or even the country, uh, I pray that this service would be a time of blessing to you as we return our hearts and our focuses on Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, I want to firstly thank everyone for their prayers and all of their warm wishes and concern over last week. Um, some of you will know that I was out of commission and in bed uh, sick. And uh, though thankfully um, it wasn't a positive, I, I, wasn't, I did not test positive for, for COVID. Um, I was still in bed for quite a few days, so uh, I want to thank everyone for their prayers, and especially my wife Tori for having taken such good care of myself and my boys during that time. Um, she is uh, very, very pregnant right now, and so it must have been a lot of work for her. Um, but I know a lot of you were more concerned about her well-being than my own, and I will not take that personally, but thank you for your prayers. I believe it was some very much uh, needed uh, rest and so um, not, not only for myself but for you as well in this season of Lent, may you find yourself resting in his presence and in our God's grace. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, with our annual congregational meeting happening in just a couple of weeks, uh, we will be sending out our, the reports by email on March 21st. If you would like to receive a hard copy, a printed copy of the report, I would ask that you would uh, send me an email or give me a phone call or let me know so that we can pre prepare those ahead of time. Uh, we will not be printing any reports um, and unless uh, requested. Uh, so we, will have very, we won't have any extras in stock uh, per se. So if you would like a printed report, please let me know over the next week. Um, we have also an ongoing and active prayer list as we announced a couple of weeks ago. Um, but just another reminder that if there's anything that we can pray about, uh, you can either uh, send me the, those prayer requests or Donna Drapkin uh, the, the prayer requests and know that a group of um, your brothers and sisters in Christ will be praying for you um, in a safe and confidential way. And so we, we know that there is no prayer too small uh, that um, that does not deserve to be uh, shared with one another. And so uh, as we continue to be apart, this is an important way that we can continue to minister to one another, serve one another, show our love and our faithfulness to one another as we continue to pray for each other. Also, over the last few weeks, we've received the sad news of the passing of Glenn Sherwood, uh, son of Evan Sherwood, and uh, the passing of Fred Aston and Lynn Cowan. Um, we, I'd like to, on behalf of First Presbyterian Church, extend my condolences, our condolences to each of their families, uh, and ask that all of you would take some time to pray for them as uh, the Lord helps them walk through and navigate these difficult times as they mourn the passing of such loved ones, um, and as they continue to celebrate the life of um, a friend of a father, a mother, sister, brother, um, of a son. And so as difficult as things are in these times, uh, may the Lord grant us uh, and grant them a special comfort and peace. 
Finally, March 29th will be the drop-off date for our hospice food drive uh, here at the church parking lot. Um, Mary Sheriff may have reached out to, to a number of you regarding that, but if you would like more information in terms of how to participate in this important ministry, please feel free to reach out to myself or Mary Sheriff. With that, let us join our hearts together as we come before the Lord in worship, uh, as we read together the call to worship that is based on Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against only you have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. Let us gather our hearts and worship the Lord. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Lord, on this day we come before you. As we have entered into uh, this daylight savings time where we have lost an hour of sleep as we have turned our clocks forward, O oh Lord, our minds and our hearts are so often occupied, but what is next? What is tomorrow? What is the next meal? What is the next task? What is the next thing to do? But Heavenly Father, here in this moment, may we come before you to lay all things down so that we may find rest in you. 
Heavenly Father, may we come before you with our sacrifice and our offerings of praise, of a contrite and broken spirit, of a contrite and broken heart, that we may come before you in all humility, surrendering ourselves to you, knowing that you are in full control of, and that you are completely sovereign over all things. And for this we give you praise and for this we give you thanks, for we know that you are a good and faithful God, for we know that your grace is sufficient enough to cover all of our sins and our iniquities and that you receive us as we come before you, by faith, as we proclaim by faith that you are our Lord and you are our Christ, you are our Savior, you are our Father. And so as we come before you, soften our hearts so that we, we may hear what you have to say to us individually and as a congregation. Uh, grant us um, ears and a, and a spirit of humility so that when you come before us and convict us, Heavenly Father, we will come to be obedient to you. For Lord, you desire our faithfulness, and yet, O oh Lord, you are worthy of our obedience. As we gather, as we worship, and as we sing praises, as we hear your word spoken and read to us, O oh Lord, may the meditation of all of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing and acceptable to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. This morning we welcome our lovely Mary Skinner as she leads us in the reading of two scripture passages. The Old Testament reading is Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The New Testament reading is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 3 to 10. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By Christ you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. And our red letter passage today is just a single verse taken from Matthew chapter 9, verses 13. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the word of the Lord.
In this season of Lent, many of us are used to the idea of fasting, uh, the idea of giving up something as a way to remember and honor Christ's journey to the cross with the beginning of his ministry taking place uh, after 40 days in the wilderness. For, uh, for the longtime Christian, churchgoer and Christian, this idea is not strange. In many, many ways, we uh, choose to, to sacrifice or fast on different things, such as sweets or certain drinks, certain TV shows, sports, or whatever it may be. But there's a danger in this if we are not careful that uh, in our fasting, we may reduce this. There is this temptation uh, to reduce this to a, a religious ritual uh, that turns piety into this self-consoling act of well, making yourself feel a little better or making your, ourselves feel a little more spiritual uh, than, than we typically do. I can remember many times when I had chosen to fast um, all throughout you know, high school and university. Uh, I would fast different things. Sometimes it would be a meal a day or all meals for a few days. I would fast from TV shows and movies, from social media. Um, in my early days as a youth pastor, I remember even mandating fasts for our youth groups during our two, three day retreats, all for the sake of becoming holier or more righteous, more spiritual. And I wonder now in hindsight whether that was ever really achieved. Of course, in the moment, it felt like I was doing that we were doing something that was worthwhile. But it became more of, I think, a pat on my own back that truly, than, than truly being effective in, in drawing me closer to God. Do you recall many weeks ago, we looked at Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 to 18, where Jesus says, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious uh, to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Jesus says this because there is a danger here, as I said, the temptation to use fasting as a way to earn the respect, the, the pity, or the praise of others. When fasting, and when fasting becomes, um, and when sacrifice becomes an act of self-righteousness uh, that effectively uh, toots our own horns, then we are completely missing the point. And this is precisely what Jesus is talking about. Jesus today is quoting the book of Hosea when he says, Learn what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. The book of Hosea is written to highlight God's faithfulness towards an unfaithful people, towards a people that he saved from Egypt and yet who broke covenant with him um, and became adulterers and idol worshippers when they turned their back in unfaithfulness to God, choosing to worship idols, uh, living in deep hypocrisy, mistreating others, allowing grave injustices uh, in their communities, breaking the Ten Commandments constantly, and then coming to God and bringing, them, uh, bringing their worship and sacrifices to him as if everything was fine. God says to them, I desire mercy not sacrifice. God, despite having a right to end the covenant, says instead in the book of Hosea again uh, that he will renew his covenant with them. Hosea uh, pleads for the people of God to turn back to him, recognizing that God is pouring out his graciousness to him purely because of his own hesed love. This is the word that is used for mercy here. So the word mercy that Jesus uses uh, from the book of Hosea is, is the word mercy, and it's the word chesed. And political theorist Daniel Lazar uh, has suggested that chesed uh, cannot easily be translated, in, translated into English, but that means something uh, like loving covenant obligation. It is often translated to steadfast love and faithfulness. 
God is showing the people this mercy uh, that he desires to see uh, flow th- through and in them. Um, he shows them this, this hesed love in the renewing of his covenant with them, in his graciousness and forgiveness, in his steadfast love. And God says, it is this, God's undeserved and extravagant hesed love that I desire to see in you, not your sacrifices. Because sacrifices are not holy. They are not godly and are not plain right when they are given as a means to an end that is not obedience and worship to the Lord. You know, when we surrender and give up things for the recognition or to earn our place, to have done our duty, or to hold ourselves above others, or in order to pat ourselves on the back and say to yourself in the mirror, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, even, all of the, even though all of this might look the part and feel the part even at times and check the right boxes in its delivery, God says your sacrifices Your worship means nothing to me if you are not being merciful, if you are not being loving. When Jesus says, um, I desire mercy, uh, not sacrifice, the Greek word for mercy here found in Matthew is translated um, as as just mercy, plainly mercy. Um, Jesus is saying that he came to show his mercy uh, and his steadfast love to sinners. He, he came to show his undes- this undeserved, extravagant love, not to the righteous so much, but to the sinners. But all the Pharisees saw was Jesus becoming ritually unclean, uh, sitting with sinners and tax collectors, eating with them. And so when they criticized him, Jesus reminds them of the book of Hosea and, in, and the admonishment of the Lord. And says, go learn what this means. I don't think you fully understand what what, uh, all of this is about. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, because I have not come for the righteous. I have come for the sinners. Again, Jesus is, uh, going back to a couple of weeks ago, uh, reiterating this idea that I have come for the sick. I have not come for the healthy. Jesus was not so much about ceremony or religiosity, though he was a good and faithful Jewish man. It didn't suffice that the disciples and followers of Christ did certain things, um, these certain things that they had to do. For for Jesus, or um, for being a follower of Christ, it uh, it is always more than just following a set of rules and regulations. It is more than rituals and ceremonies. As always, as ever, it is about the heart that is behind it, the posture of the heart. Based on what Jesus is saying, mercy really is the opposite of sacrifice. Because in the way that people were using sacrifice, in in the ways that a lot of times we use sacrifice, um, sacrifice becomes uh, more focused on me, on my, on I. It is something that I am doing. It is something that I am giving up so that I could ultimately benefit in some shape or form. But mercy and steadfast love, as Jesus is talking about it in its purest form, is about them. It is about the other. It is about the outliers. It is about the sinners. Now, Jesus isn't talking about merciful as we often understand it. Um, Because, once again, if we think of mercy as me being merciful, it puts me back in the driver's seat, doesn't it? It sets us up to say or think the words, aren't I merciful? Haven't I been merciful today? Jesus, in talking about mercy, is talking about his kind of mercy. This Christ-like, self-giving, self-forgetting, self-forsaking, steadfast love. The mercy and steadfast love Jesus is talking about, it is about the other. It is outwardly focused. It is less about what I am doing, what we are doing, and more about how we are actually living in community, in relationship, amongst one another, amongst others. The grace and hesed 
steadfast covenant love of God is revealed to us most perfectly in the birth, the, the life, and ministry, the death, and resurrection, and in the promised return of Christ. It is that which motivates us to live with compassion, with mercy. It is because of God being rich in mercy, as we read in Ephesians today, um, it is because of this great love with which he loved us, Uh, that even in our death we are made alive in Christ. It is by this grace we have been saved, redeemed from even the need to bring sacrifices anymore uh, to God. For Christ was the ultimate sacrifice to end all sacrifices, so that in his grace we would be raised up with him by faith. We are not saved by our works. We are not saved by our fasting. We are not saved by our sacrifices because we are saved by, through, in Christ. This is the the great gift of God given freely to us who were so undeserving. We who worship idols, who uh, allow grave injustices in our society, who are disobedient, and who we who are guilty of sin, wickedness, and selfishness, pride, and arrogance. We who wrongly believe we could do anything to earn God's favor. We who wrongly believe that we are better than others. When indeed Christ did not come for the righteous, but he came for sinners. He came for you and I. We are saved by Christ being his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Do you understand what this is saying? Do you hear what it means? Being his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. All of this to say that it is God who works within us to motivate us to live out good lives. This is all ordained by God. This is all directed by God's spirit who works within you and within us. Lent and fasting ought to be a time where we center our lives around Christ and prayerfully seek to become more like him. And if we are not careful, if our hearts are not in the right posture or in the right place, if we are not fully in tune with what God is wanting to do in our lives and how he is working within us so that we would live for good works which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them, then fasting and sacrifice and all that we do can become a thing we do to feel better about ourselves. Unless our fasting and our sacrifice Uh, gives way to a more Christ-like living, then it is not what Christ desires. Lent is a time where we grow to give, uh, not because we are told to give, but because we are moved and desire to give. It is a time where we grow to love, not because we are simply told that we must love, but because we truly do love and care for all. It is a time where we pray and kneel before the Lord, not because it is what we are supposed to do, but because it becomes our great delight to sit and spend time with the Lord. It is a time where we learn to be merciful and to love steadfastly, not simply because God mandates it, but because God has created in us a willing and compassionate heart. As we come closer to Palm Sunday, Good Friday and Easter Sunday. I believe the remaining couple of weeks of Lent, um, are, they are calling us to, to respond to the invitation of Christ. It is an invitation to softer hearts. It is an invitation to desire the Spirit of God so that he may work and shape and mold us to desire to live in steadfast love and in mercy. And so may this Lent Regardless of how it began, may this season from this moment on lead us closer to the cross of Christ, 
where we are not cursory fans or observers or per simply participants in, 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 in all of what we believe in, but led closer to be as Christ, like Christ, and for Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, at this time, I invite you to come before the Lord in all humility and with contrite hearts, to come before him and pray, asking that his spirit would touch and move within us, that he would give us a clean heart and a renewed spirit, the joy of his salvation, and so that uh, God's goodness and his steadfast love would flow out, uh, out and through us effortlessly. I believe that is the call to, to live as, uh, as Christ did, to love as easily and as simply, as effortlessly as he did us. And so may this be our prayer. And again, over the next few more weeks of Lent, um, it is never too late, but may we turn our hearts and our focuses upon Christ, asking that once again, he soften our hearts so that we may be as he is. Amen. Almighty, steadfast, and faithful God, it is you who, in your Hesed love, have shown your faithfulness to us, even when we were sinners, even when we were your enemies, even when we um, were, were broken and lost. You came, O Lord, and uh, welcomed us home. You called us by name, and you took our hand and draw us back to you. It is because of your mercy, Heavenly Father, that we can know you and we can know love and acceptance, forgiveness, O oh Lord, your grace. And we know that your grace is sufficient in, in covering all of our iniquities and all of our sin. But not only that, that your grace is sufficient to empower us so that we may live as you uh, had shown us that we may live beyond more than just uh, religion and, and doing the things that we, we know we ought to do, but having, Heavenly Father, having a genuine desire and a heart that flows from you to love and to welcome and to reach out, to forgive and to care, to be compassionate, to feed, and to heal, and to pray for others. Teach us, O oh Lord, what it means once again to have clean hearts as we come before you with broken spirits and contrite hearts. Teach us once again and remind us of the joy of your salvation. For we know that you do not desire our sacrifices. You do not desire our burnt offerings. You desire mercy. And so may we be merciful people, not so that we can say that I am merciful, but that you are merciful towards us. We give you praise as we uh, think of all that is good around us, that uh, we give you thanks uh, as we recognize how you continue to say, sustain us. Your church, beyond the walls of this building, O oh Lord, you sustain us and uphold us with your righteous and steadfast hand. For your love, we give you thanks. We give you praise, O oh Lord. 
We come before you carrying in our hearts the burdens of uh, our friends and our families and those in our communities who need your special touch and your, your, uh, your presence in their lives. Uh, we ask that you would be with those who mourn, for those who are sick, for those who are angry, for those who are with those who are lonely, O oh Lord. May you grant them your hum comfort, your presence, and your peace. Continue to lead us to be a people of prayer, um, as we know that within us we have your living water. And so may your living water flow out through us as we reach out uh, to our neighbors, our friends, and families. Yes, Lord, even our enemies and strangers. For all that we have to bring to you today, we ask that you would uh, breathe upon it, uh, to use it to continue to build your kingdom and to bless your church for the glory of your name. For those of us who were unable to give or who desired to give more, uh, receive our hearts as an act of worship that is pleasing and acceptable to you. We pray all of these things in the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may you go and grow in the knowledge of the grace of God, in the peace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit that sets us free into a life that is full and abundant. Go as you abide in his spirit to fill, fulfill the very purpose for which you were created, called, and sent, overflowing with his love, and so that you may go to love one another as he loves you. Amen. Amen.